Hi, this is Peggy Miller. I'm a medical herbalist with Highland Winds LLC, and I'm doing a podcast series on medical herbalism, both Chinese and Ayurvedic. This particular segment, 15 minutes long, is called maintenance, and this one is for teenagers. I'll be doing 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, etc., and the reason why this is maintenance three segment is because one and two address issues of how to determine whether your symptoms are just maintenance or whether you need to really seek out and get a full consult. So be sure to listen to one and two. This is maintenance three, and I'm talking to teenagers today. Once again, my name's Peggy Miller. I'm a certified medical herbalist. I've been practicing for many years, and I've wanted to talk to teenagers for a long time. So I hope you'll listen up. Um, if it gets boring, just put stop it and come back to it. Um, basically, herbs can help you. The teenage years are years of tremendous tension. They are years of hormonal uh, changes that are flowing through your body and creating massive um, uprisings of your physical system in ways that you are noticing, I'm sure. And herbs can help this. Basically, let's start with stress. Stress is one of the main things that teenagers are faced with. You've got stress not only because you're trying to get along within your family, usually, but you're also trying to get along and figure out your place in school in your social gatherings, if you have a part-time job of some sort, at work, and you're also just simply trying to figure out your goals in life, what you're going to do with your life, people are pressuring you, it is fraught with tension. And that tension really creates not only hormonal changes that are even stronger than would normally be there, but it creates changes in your physical system. And it's hard to put up with. You have insomnia because of it. You've got anxiety. Your skin erupts, is, erupts from the stress. A lot of it's just the stress. But it's also diet. So what are some of the herbs just for the stress? And also, let's talk some about diet because that's really an important part. And there are herbs that can help with that. Stress alone uh, needs to be calmed down as much as possible. Exercise helps. Not, I'm not talking about mega uh, sports team exercise, but just doing some yoga, stretches, a quiet walk uh, can all really calm the system down and I advise them. But in addition to ex quiet exercise, you can take a look at your diet. Um, how, how, are you using drugs and alcohol at all? Do you eat a lot of red meat, a lot of pizza? a lot of caffeine drinks, all of these things can also contribute to the problems your skin is having and to your lack of sleep and even your emotions. And let me explain that a little. But first on the stress. On stress, there are a couple of herbs that are very nice. One is called schisandra, S-C-H-I-Z-A-N-D-R-A. You make it as a tea. It looks kind of like a little berry. In fact, it is kind of a dried little berry, but it helps soothe the heart, helps anxiety, but it's also really good for blood nourishment and yin nourishment, both things that you probably need. So schisandra is one, cornus is another, C-O-R-N-U-S. It goes well with schisandra, so consider pairing them and making a tea out of it for a couple times a week. You'll relax more, and it'll soothe the heart some, and you'll be able to focus better. So that's one thing just as a start. Looking at your diet, and if you are a pizza, caffeine, you know, soft drinks, red meat, grilled, um, or just you're eating on the run, uh, you're grabbing a hamburger here or a vegan diet that's overly emphasis of veggies without enough of the B carbs or enough of the red meat for blood. 
then basically your diet is going to do a couple things to your system, which are going to contribute to the stress and contribute to your emotional problems. And by problems, I mean, if you're feeling more stress than you wish you would, or you're feeling angry at things, maybe you don't want to be angry about or depressed more than, I don't know, you should be then those are indicators of what's called liver key stagnation. Now, liver key stagnation is in and of itself something that really needs uh, to be periodically cleared, whether you're a teen or later in your life. But doing it now will, oh, it will help so much. It'll help calm the emotions. It'll help soften the depression or soften the anger. It will help with PMS because some of the liver stagnation, blood stagnation, key stagnation, they all um, cause and are caused by menstrual cycles. And for guys, it's not obviously a menstrual cycle, but you have your own hormonal imbalances that create your own type of PM PMS. And the liver has a lot to do with this. If it's plogged because of an overuse of drugs or alcohol or pills or just a really crummy diet or an intermittent diet, it can get plogged both by blood and the reason blood stagnates is because the liver needs it in order to, needs to clear it and the blood transports um, nutrients but it can become overclogged and the liver get, becomes clogged. And you basically have to clear it. And the key channels, the energy channels flowing through your body also can become clogged. When this happens, you need to clear it. There are simple ways to do this, especially at younger age. When this builds up for decades, you know, like you're 50, then it's you need stronger herbs. But the ones I'm recommending today aren't strong. Lemon water helps clear the liver. Or go to your um, tea aisle in your market and look for dandelion tea. Dandelion helps clear the liver. It also gives you a lot of vitamin A, and it also helps clear internal heat, which can be caused from anything. Um, tension. Tension causes internal heat, causes the heart to get too hot. Um, but also illnesses cause heat. Menstrual cycle causes heat. For guys, uh, tension, uh, their own hormone imbalances, and their diet all cause heat, internal heat. Dandelion alone can help clear this. Add a little tiny bit of milk thistle, and you've got a very good liver-clearing tea. I recommend it. And so that's, that's one of the things, plus lemon water sometimes when you first get up in the morning can really help. Keep the liver clear if you possibly can. In addition, do something about your diet some if you can. Um, when you're eating pizza, add veggies to it. Any kind of veggies would help a great deal. When you're making sandwiches, try to keep sprouts on hand and use sprouts, and that will help your digestive system a great deal. One of the things that happens when you eat too much cheese, like on pizza or on cheeseburgers, etc., cheese can help stagnate the spleen, and then the spleen doesn't work well, and its job is to break up food, is to disintegrate food so that the nutrients can get into the blood. If the spleen isn't working right because of your diet or lack of exercise, let's say, or just uh, over tension. It's been shown in Chinese herbalism that pensiveness, worry, impacts the spleen a lot. So if the spleen's not doing its job, then you'll feel tired. Your intestines won't break up food correctly. So they'll be stagnant. You'll have bloating. You'll have gas. Your stomach will react. So there are different herbs for this. Codnopsis is one. It works well with the trictolodes, and it can help clear the and dry the spleen, and it helps increase your energy levels. So those are two herbs that you can make in a very light tea, and sometimes have, and, and they're quite good. Make sure they're diluted enough. Um, don't overuse them, but those are a couple herbs that can be quite good. 
you, you need to work on your spleen and your liver and your heart. So keeping things cool uh, can really make a big difference. Okay, so let's say you, you're cutting back on the drugs and alcohol and you are working on using dandelion tea and lemon, uh, lemon water in the mornings and so starting to clear your liver, which is all good, and um, then you use the schisandra and the cornice to help nourish the blood there are a few other things that you can do. Let's talk about your skin for a minute because this is critical. In teenage years, the skin erupts in many teens. Not all teens, but many. And that's because of toxins in your diet, but it's also just because of stress. So the schisandra and cornice will help with that. But you can get sarsaparilla and combine it with sage, make a strong tea, meaning take a couple tablespoons of each one, put it in a saucepan, put in two cups of water, bring it to a boil, take it off the heat, and let it steep for like an hour or two. And it'll make a strong liquid. And you can then strain off the herbs in the liquid, store it in a jar, and use that to cleanse your face. It will help. It's an astringent that also has what's called an expectorant in it, and that helps clear your skin. So that can help from external. And believe it or not, the very same herbs made as a tea, but not as strong. You only need like, oh, a teaspoon and a half, uh, or at the most a tablespoon of each, not two, and you need a full quart of water and you take those, add a little honey for taste. With all these teas, you can add honey for taste. Honey dries mucus, it doesn't create it. Sugar creates mucus, honey dries it. Um, so make it as a tea in a quart size and drink that you know, once a week and it will help. And if you have real skin problems, drink it every couple days and that will help by putting it on the inside and then using the rinse on the outside because the skin's important. It's important to clear it. It's important how you look and how you feel about how you look. So that can help a great deal. The other thing is if you are a very quiet person, maybe you're very nurturing, but you're quiet, that means you're a fairly yin person. You may want to be a little bit more yang. If you do, eat some walnuts. <laughs> walnuts help increase yang. Don't eat tons. Eat a handful every day for a week and then cut back to once every few days. They will help increase yang. You'll feel yourself able to put yourself out there a little bit more. Other herbs that help with this are cayenne, chili, peppers, or ginger. They all help increase warmth, and that gives you sort of an oomph to put yourself out in a stronger way sometimes. Conversely, a yang, a super strong yang person who very out there, you know, walks in a room and you see him right away, they need to increase their yin. More salads or cooked veggies will help this as well as cheese can sometimes help this if you find you don't eat much. But in addition, um, there are herbs like, well, shisandra is partially a yin herb, so is lysi berries. Goji berries can be found even in Walmart. They're a great yin herb. They're also good for curbing any sugar spikes you have. So look for goji berries and use them as a tea or sprinkle them on your pizza. Also include turmeric to help keep the liver and the gallbladder clear. I could go on and on about the different herbs, but these are some of the primary ones that could help you find just a better balance as you go through and so you get better sleep and you're able to keep your liver clean and functioning better. And for women with menstrual cramps, consider Dongi 4. If you're um, in your teens and you've got bad cramps, Look up Dongi 4. It's a recipe of four herbs, and it could help you a lot with PMS as well as with your uh, blood stagnation. 
So I'm Peggy Miller. I'm with Highland Winds LLC. I hope this has helped a little. You've got a lot going on in your life right now, no matter what you're doing. The world is full of issues. I hope you participate, and I'll be looking forward to you listening to other ones in the future. Thanks very much for listening.